Hallelujah. We, we, we came here to praise him. We came here to praise him. So open up your heart and let him in. You didn't come all this way for nothing. Open up your heart. Hallelujah. Let him in. Hallelujah. Anybody got an expectation of that? I got an expectation of that. This morning, hallelujah. Open up. open up your hearts and let him in. Hallelujah. Beautiful song. Open up your hearts. Hallelujah. Reason why things ain't working right, but maybe your heart closed. Hallelujah. The Bible says that Jesus, I said at the door and knock. Behold, if you open up the door, I will sup with you and you with me. Hallelujah. You want to in your heart today. Hallelujah. I want God in my life and don't open up the door. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's like looking at a job and say, I need some money, but don't want to go to work. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Open up your heart and let him in. Hallelujah. Daniel chapter 2. Hallelujah. We serve a good God. And a good church. I said we serve a good God. And he's good right now. Hallelujah. He's good right now. If you think about all the times you let God in, hallelujah. Why do you think about all the because sometimes we kick God out of our hearts? Hallelujah. We're about to learn how to keep our heart open for God. Hallelujah. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we, we are here today, God, and we are at this moment. God, and we are here with a word that we need from you, God. God, we've heard the song, we've heard the prayer, and we've even heard the, our worship leader said that there's a praise, and how God, we need a praise, God. We need to be praising you, God, in the name of you, with all that you have done for us. We ought to have a praise. There will be, we don't have to worry about a song or a musician. We all ought to have our own praise, oh God, for you. For all that you are doing for us and have done for us down through the years in this very present moment. God, you've done all these things. And God, we say thank you today. God, we, we thank you for uh, giving us a heart to be able to open it up, God. God, you're such a good God. You are such a great God. You are so awesome in all that you do. Father, there are times we mess up and times that we make no, we don't even make mistakes. We do bad things on purpose sometimes. Sometimes, oh God, we even plan to sin. But God, we want to thank you, God, that you're ever so merciful. That you still got the ability to look beyond our faults and to see every one of our needs. God, we want to say thank you today, God. Even with a closed heart, with a stout heart, with a stiff neck. God, you are still able to love us in spite of. God, you're still able to take care of us in spite of. God, you are still good. In spite of me, God, you are still good. In spite of us all, God, you are still good. God, in spite of us going to work, then you are still good. There may be earthquakes and hurricanes and fire storms all over the world. People are losing their lives. But God, you are still good. Hallelujah. We have death in our families and people are getting sick in the hospital. But God, you are still good. Hallelujah. And we know that you're good, God. Father God, I ask you to please forgive us of our sins. Forgive us, oh God. God, I, God, I, I ask you, oh God, if we haven't done so already, God, too. God, we invite you, oh God, into this service. God, we, we invite you, oh Holy Ghost. To do all that you want to do. We invite you, Holy Ghost. No, you don't need our invitation. But God, but we have to open up our hearts and let you in. God, and we thank you, God. And God, as we get ready to go into your word, God, I ask you to have Daniel for to decrease. But have Jesus Christ increase to your people in word and deed and power and insight in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm just sitting there thinking about all how, how good God is to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes we wake up and we tell God thank you for the day. But we don't tell him how good. We don't sometimes we have to testify to ourselves. Hallelujah. That, that he woke me up this morning. Hallelujah. It wasn't the alarm clock. I was able to feed myself. I was able to clothe myself this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When I turned on looked over to my wife, she wasn't dead. She was awake. Hallelujah. She was alive and God put breath in her body too. So my son, his, he was asleep, but God had breath in his body. God is good, church. Is he good to you, church? To testify all my say God is good to me. Come up at four, five, four. Everybody shout, God is good to me. He's good to me. Hallelujah. He's good to us, church. Thank you, Jesus. Daniel chapter 2, starting at verse 1, and it reads, And in the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams, wherewith his spirit was troubled and his sleep break from him. Then the king commanded to call the magicians and the astrologers and the sorcerers and the Chaldeans for to show the king his dreams. So they came and stood before the king, and the king said unto them, I have dreamed the dream, and my spirit was troubled to know the dream. Then spake the Chaldeans to the king in, in, in Syriac, and the and, and O king lived forever, tell thy servants the dream, and we will show the interpretation. The king answered and said to the Chaldeans, The the thing is gone from me. If ye will not make known unto me the dream with the interpretation thereof. Ye shall be cut off in pieces, and your houses shall be made of dunghill. But if you show me the dream and the interpretation thereof, ye shall receive gifts of me, gifts and rewards and, and great honor. Therefore, show me the dream and the interpretation thereof. Yeah. Hallelujah. He said, show me the dream. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They answered again and said, let the king tell thy servants the dream. And we will show the interpretation of it. The king answered and said, I know of certainty that you will gain the time because ye see the thing is gone from me. But if you will not make known unto me the dream, there will be but one decree for you. For ye, will, for ye have prepared lying and corrupt words to speak before me till, till the time be changed. Hallelujah. Therefore, tell me the dream, and I will show, and I shall know that ye can show me the interpretation thereof. Listen to the Chaldeans. The Chaldeans answered before the king and said, There is not a man upon the earth that can show the king's matter. Therefore, there is no king, lord, nor ruler. Hallelujah. That that answers that if asked such things. And any magician or astrologer or Chaldean, and it is a rare thing that the king requires, and there is none other that can show it before the king except the gods whose dwelling is not, thank you, Jesus, with the with the flesh. Hallelujah. Jump down, thank you, Jesus. Jump down to verse 25. Then Ariad brought in Daniel before the king in haste. And said thus unto the king, I have found a man of the captains of Judah that will make known unto the king the interpretation thereof. The king answered and said to Daniel, whose name is Belshazzar, art thou able to make known unto me of the dream which I have seen and the interpretation thereof? And Daniel answered the king in the presence, answered in the presence of the king and said, The secret that the king has demanded. Cannot, uh, cannot the wise men, the astrologers, the magicians, the soothsayers show the king? Listen to this. But there is a God in heaven. Right. I'm going to stop right there. But there is a God in heaven. Right. Hallelujah. I came to preach to us this morning. God will work it out. Amen. Hallelujah. Before you take your seats, before you take your seats, you're going to help me preach this morning. Uh, 
Right. Hallelujah. I need, I need uh, my the side on my on my right, your left, to face the other side. Come on, turn, turn. Everybody look at each other. I need that's right. This side, turn on this side. Turn towards them. I need, I need you on this side to repeat after me. On my on my right, your left. I want you to, to, to say, God will work it out. God will work it out. Okay, y'all don't sound too convincing. You know, I need y'all to testify to that because if y'all have been through something, you ought to be able to tell somebody that God will work it out. Yeah. God will work it out. And I need this side to repeat back and say, yes, he can. Yes, he can. One more time, yes, he can. Yes, he can. Come on, get the God will work it out. God will work it out. This side. And I look at the story, I said, why didn't this man just kill him? 
That's a, that's, a, that's a good question. Why didn't the king with all this power, he didn't have to wait. Some things just don't make sense. But I've learned that, that with God, things just don't make sense. It don't have to make sense. Because God, when God is ready to work something out, hallelujah, who God working out? I mean, the, the, the circumstances don't even have to make sense. Don't even have to match. Hallelujah. Let me give you an example. I was studying this. God gave me two little examples. They're fictional. So, one man comes to another man and said, man, I done lost my job. And the other man says, man, yeah, I understand. Last week, all I had in my refrigerator was one egg, one hot dog, and a package with the juice. And he walks off. I was like, what? <laughs> what does that have to do with the other? And he said, what? How God is in somebody else's life may be different than how he is in your life. I may not can't relate to you with what you're going through, but with the testimony that I got, hallelujah, one man is struggling another way, but the other man is testifying. He was without food, but when he looked at his refrigerator, he still had an egg and a hot dog in the package with the juice in it. To him, that's him to the other man. To me, God worked it out for me. Don't you know God will work it out for you? Whatever your situation is, God can do some, some of the strangest things at the strangest times and somehow work that thing out. Hallelujah. Uh, just like this story in the Bible. We have here a very interesting story. First, if you go back just a little bit, we have four Hebrew boys. The Bible says in chapter 1 that, that, that Nebuchadnezzar, he has a he said, he sends a man out. He said, I want you to go out and go among the children of Israel, among the tribes of Judah. I want you to find some boys that are without blemish, that are handsome, and well able to learn. I want you to get some children and bring them to us. And I want you to, 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 to teach them our ways. And I want you to feed them my food and give them some wine because after three years, I want them to be my servants. Hallelujah. And then among them were the four. But the one that answered was Daniel. Daniel said, when the food came to him, he told the man, the Bible says that, that there was one who Daniel had, had got favor from. And Daniel said, listen, um, I know what the king want me to eat, but I don't want to defile myself. And, and, I, and I saw in this moment, here this man has a directive from the king to tell these children to eat his food, but the children are being defiant to tell the servant to, why don't you let me eat what I want to eat? And I said, God, these kids weren't killed. Oh, this is the story here. If you look at it, just look at the whole story. These, Daniel was back talking. Y'all want to hear me today? Well, what, what would happen if, if, if a child back talks you? Come on, if I go to the old days, today you can't touch children today. But back in the old days, if a child back talks you, you put something on that child for back talking. Now imagine if you go way back to the times of Daniel, it was no different back then. Hallelujah. And Daniel said, I tell you, let me eat beans and water. That's what porridge is. Let me eat beans and water and let you and you see what, what will happen. And the Bible tells us, look at what the Bible says, that after they had done what they had done, thank you, Jesus. The Bible says that the king, in chapter 1, it says that, that the king commanded and was among them all. And it said that there was nobody like Daniel, nobody like Hananiah, nobody like, like Mishael, nobody like Azariah. That Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But he said there was nobody that found like them. And the Bible says, in all the matters and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than all of the magicians and astrologers that were in his realm. And Daniel continued even to the first year of King Cyrus. Look at this, look at this. They were supposed to be three years learning and studying the ways of the Chaldeans. But then they was before the king. 
and you get to chapter 2, it says that, 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 that in Nebuchadnezzar's second year, he had this dream, but he couldn't understand it. The children were never supposed to be in front of him, but the Bible says when he could get an answer, he said, I want to kill every wise man. Keep If you read the whole chapter, you'll see this. He said, I want to kill every wise man because somebody's been lying to me. You say you're wise, but you can't interpret my dream. You say you know everything, but you can't help me. So there ain't but one decree. I want everybody killed. And when Daniel found out, he said, what's the problem? Hallelujah. He said, what's the problem? And, 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 he, and the man tells Daniel, he said, the king said, there ain't nobody that can interpret his dream. And Daniel said, give me a little time and I'm going to search out God. And he will give me what thing that the king needs. And let me pause here again. We see Daniel a child. And he's before the king. What would make the king distrust everybody who he's depending on during his entire reign to, to trust a slave child that he had to capture that don't like him, but yet he rather forget his own servants and remember uh, and talk to a slave. What would make a king do that? I ain't got one answer. There's nobody but God. Nobody but God can take a you of situations and turn it around and make it turn out and show you that I can work it out like this. God can, can, can do some things in your eyes that you don't understand. How is it going to work? God said, don't you worry about it. Just let me work. There are times in our life we have to look at it, don't question it, and say, God, we'll work it out. We have to learn how to be just like Daniel when there's a problem in your face. You want to learn how to speak to him? Let give me some time. Let me go talk to God. I don't know what's happening, but if you give me just a little bit of time, I will go talk to God. Oh my God. Hallelujah. 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 Sometimes you have to learn when to go talk to God. I know we have emergencies in our life. I know we have things going in our life. When we get bad reports, we get things that are so hectic, we don't know what to do. But there are times we have to still, in the midst of an emergency, know how to say, let me talk to God. There ain't enough time. No, there is always enough time to talk to God. I don't know how he'll do it. But even in this situation, I believe God got an answer, and I believe he got an answer for somebody in this place today. Whatever you're going through, give God the time, and I declare, he will work it out. By the Bible, Bible tells us in this second chapter, it tells us in the second chapter, when, when, the, when, 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 when God, when Daniel tells uh, Ariok, he said, so Ariok, I, I'm, I'm ready now. He hurried up. He said, King, there's a, a, a slave boy who got the answer. He's one of these little boys that you don't brought up here. He said he can answer. Oh, Jesus. And, and, I, and I love how Daniel makes his introduction. Listen to his introduction. When he says, and in verse uh, 27, it says, Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, The secret which the king had demanded cannot the wise men, the astrologers, the magicians, the soothsayers show unto the king. He said, But there is a God in heaven that revealed a secret. Sometimes you just have to know the answer. Hallelujah. Regardless of before you give the answer, you have to know where the answer is going to come from. This is what he says. And look at, look at the introduction to God. And he says, And God maketh known to the king, never shall never what shall be in the latter days. Thy dream and the visions of thy head upon thy bed are these. As for thee, O king, thy thoughts came into their mind upon thy bed, what shall come to pass thereafter. And he that revealed the secrets Make it known to thee what shall come to pass. But he said, but as for me, this secret is not revealed to me for any wisdom that I have more than any living. But for thy sakes, that shall make known the interpretations of the king, that thou mightest know the thoughts of thy heart. Thou, O king, sawest and behold a great image. 
the great image whose brightness was excellent stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. This image hand was of fine gold, his breast and his arms of silver, and his belly and his thighs of brass, his legs of iron, his feet part of iron, part of clay, hands, thank you Jesus, will smoke the image upon the feet that stood iron and clay and break them into pieces. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the summer, uh, and, and, and the gold broken into pieces and became like the chase of the summer threshing force. And the wind carried away, and, and that found no place was found for them. And the stone that smoked the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. This is the dream, and we will tell you the interpretation thereof before the king. Thou, O king, art a king of kings. For the God of heaven has given thee a kingdom, power, and strength, and glory. And whithersoever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field, and the fowls of heaven, have he given into thy hand, and hath made thee ruler over them all. Thou art his hand of gold. Ooh, Jesus. Listen to this powerful stuff. And after thee shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee, and another third kingdom of brass, which shall break, bear rule over the, all the earth. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron, for as much as iron breaketh in pieces, and subdue all things, as iron that breaketh all pieces, shall it break in pieces and rule. And whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, part of the part of clay, and part of the iron, the kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be an all strength of the iron. For as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with fiery clay. Hallelujah. We jump down. And, and, uh, and, and then verse 46. It says, Then King Nebuchadnezzar fell upon his face and worshipped Daniel and commanded that they offer an obligation and sweet orders unto them. The king answered unto Daniel and said, Of a truth, it is that your God is a God of gods and a Lord of kings and a revealer of secrets. Seeing thou couldst reveal this secret, then the king made Daniel a great man and gave him many great gifts and made him ruler of the whole province of Babylon, chief of the governors over all the men of of Babylon. What's the point, Pastor? The point is this, that won't God work it out? Yeah. You may be a slave today, but God has a means of making you a ruler tomorrow. He has a means to make you a governor tomorrow. All you have to do is know that there is a God in heaven that can do anything. And there is a God in heaven that can reveal secrets. That there is a God in heaven that don't think like I think
know. <laughs> Some of us said, now, now everybody go to God and pray immediately. We want to know what's wrong. And we hear what's going on. And it's stuff that blows our mind. You say, I ain't never experienced that. But one thing I do know, that I know a God that can. I know a God that will. I know a God that can do the impossible. I know a God that can speak. When he speaks, he can make things move. I know a God who opens up his mouth. Before he said whatever, things are already getting in the place. I know a God. Is there anybody in here that knows a God?
whole nation without them hunting the bird and bring it down from heaven when they got hungry. Whatever you're going through, I'm going to tell you, yes, he will. That's for somebody in the house today. We need to learn how to tell ourselves, look in the mirror. Look in the mirror and testify to yourself. Testify to yourself. When you done heard all the bad reports and you hear in your heart, listen to me, the Bible says, out of the heart does the mouth speak. But sometimes your faith got to trump what's in your heart and you got to tell yourself, yes, I will. Yes, God will. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. Verse 9 of Isaiah 46. He says, remember the former things of old. Think about your life. Think about everything that you done been through. And he says these words. He says, for I am God. You need to get there. Y'all ain't got to be shouting. Remember what happened way back then. But I want you to know, he said, for I am God. And there is none else. I am God. And there is none like me. If there is none like God, you ought to have a none like God. Friend. If there is none like God in your life, you ought to have a none like God. Friend. Is there anybody in here that's got a none like God? 
Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, 